In this video, we will be doing a derivation of the Leonard Weichert potentials, which are uh, which is a derivation of the scalar and vector potentials phi of r and t, a of r and t, for a point charge q moving along a specified trajectory omega t. Here we will use an arbitrary point p naught, a distance r from the origin to define the potential. It is important to note that the potential at time t at point p naught is not dependent on the particle's position at time t because electromagnetic information is not delivered instantaneously, but instead is mediated by photons traveling at the speed of light. As a result, p naught is instead in communication with the charge's earlier position, omega tr, called the time-retarded position, for which the retarded time, tr, is defined by tr t minus mega tr minus p naught over c, where this expression is defined as r and is equal to the distance the information travels between times t and tr. Using this definition of retarded time and the potential equations previously derived, the scalar potential equation, sorry, I'm changing notation here to, from phi to v, becomes equal to where we are using tr, the time retarded potential, and r, the, diff the distance between our point p naught and the time retarded position omega tr. Now the r may be brought outside of the integral and it may be tempting to just define what's left as the total charge q. However, because the charge is moving and we must consider the retarded time position, we need a correction factor. This effect is entirely geometrical and so I will explain uh, what the correction factor is through the use of an intuitive proof. So. We imagine a train, so I'm just going to draw a train, there we go. Now our train has length L and is moving at speed V. And here we are over here watching. Now because electromagnetic information takes time to travel, the light you see from the caboose leaves earlier than the light that you see from the front of the train. And in the time it takes the train to move a distance, sorry, for the time it takes the light to move a distance L prime, the train is able to move a distance L prime minus L, such that L prime over C is equal to L prime minus L over V. And rearranging this expression, we get L, it's a V, I'm sorry. L prime V over C equals L prime minus L. L prime minus L prime V over C is equal to L, where I've moved the negative over as well. And L prime is equal to L over 1 minus V over C. Where this 1 minus V over C is a correction factor for the real length and the apparent length as viewed by an, our observer. Now generalizing this to a more general case with our second observer over here, the light from the caboose that he sees has to move a greater distance L prime cos theta, where here this angle is theta. So L prime cos theta over C is now equal to L prime minus L over V which we rearrange to get L prime equal to L over 1 minus V cos 
theta over c. This can alternatively be written as L prime equal to L minus L over 1 minus V dot R hat over C, where R hat is the unit vector between the observer's position and the time retarded position of the, of the caboose. Now this change in apparent size is only valid for the length dimension in which the train is moving. As a result, the height and width of the train appear undistorted to both our observers. And the apparent volume change of the train is the same as the apparent change of length. Now the connection between retarded time potentials and speeding trains may seem stretched, but it is the modification of the effective volume when dealing with the time retarded positions that carries over, and our expression for our earlier scalar potential, V of R and T, becomes here I've moved the R out, as I said I was able to earlier. R hat dot V over C times D tau. And now in this case, we are again able to remove this factor outside of the integral, and then our charge density uh, over our volume integral is now Q. And after some minor algebra, where I multiply the top and the bottom by the speed of light C, we are left with our scalar potential for moving charge along a specified trajectory for that expression. Now, solving for the vector potential, A R of T, using the expression we derived earlier, And because the current density of a rigid body, uh, J, is equal to R to rho V, this expression simply becomes mu naught over 4 pi R V And again, our correction factor is still valid. which so happens to be equal to v over c squared and there you have our two expressions for the vector and scalar potentials of a moving charge of a point charge moving along a specified trajectory omega t